Welcome to Sunny's, the car wash factory. In conjunction with this training video, please reference each component's owner's manual, available at sunnysdirect.com, before performing any installation, repair, or maintenance procedure. Each manual details specific requirements and settings necessary for the safe operation and maintenance of your car wash equipment. All right, now we're going to talk about our foaming applicator arches. This consists of our dual foaming applicator arch at the beginning, our floor applicators from the floor, and then down the tunnel, it'll apply to our foaming wax applicators like our Rain-X or our Total Body Protectants. Um, all of them operate very much the same way as far as adjusting our foams to get wet or dry foams and get the right coverage. But the first thing I want to talk about here on the dual applicating arch is the direction in which the nozzles are set up to spray. What we use here are flat fan nozzle, nozzles on the sprayers. They look kind of funny. They have a different opening to them. They're not as directional as you would look at as a standard nozzle. They, the direction actually comes out the side of the nozzle. And we have these here set up with the tip of the nozzle pointing towards the exit of the car wash, but not straight down the tunnel. If I stand here as the middle of the vehicle, they're pointing more at me three feet away from the arch. Okay? And when they do that, that's not the way the chemical comes out. The chemical comes out, hits that head, and then sprays this way towards the front of the car. So when the car's coming in, it'll actually come in, spray the front bumper and grill, overlap, and then open up as the car comes closer and spray down the side of the car. As a computer control, we have one function control on these both sides. We'll shut it off just about two feet before the back of the car gets to the arch so that we don't waste any product. But because of that angle, we'll have sprayed the entire side of the vehicle. It won't spray the back of the car. That's where the top comes in. Our top nozzles, the tips are pointed backwards, so our fan is coming down this way. We activate this here right about above the windshield where it'll come out and spray over the hood, spray the windshield, and then as the car passes, it'll actually paint the back of a van all the way down as far as it goes. On a slow chain speed, this arch is enough to get your chemical on front, side, and rears of the vehicle. In a location like this here, we're expecting to be high volume, it's a longer tunnel. We've also got floor applicators that assist us in getting the very bottom of the front and back of the car, which is critical, from the floor and helps to get, ensure us we get complete chemical coverage on the vehicle so that whenever we touch it with our friction and high pressure, we can actually clean. We can do all the friction and all the high pressure, but without the right chemistry application, we won't clean the car. I'm gonna step back, we're gonna turn this pump on we'll be able to see the spray pattern of how this works, and then we'll be able to adjust our chemistry from dry foam to wet foam and just show you a little bit of the fine details in tuning it up, um, and you'll see how that works, okay? So we'll turn this on right now, and you'll see how this comes out. So as you can see, if I stand here in line with the arch, I barely get wet by the chemistry because the nozzles are spraying towards the front of the car as it comes in. The application is such that we're getting a nice wet foam here on the car that's going to help run down the side of the car and cover it completely, turn it white. As long as we get chemistry on the car, we'll be able to see that it is completely covered and we know that we've done our job with our chemical application. Um, the, the arches out here also have a small air adjustment. We can help fine tune our, our arch and we'll give you a couple of demonstrations of that as well. Uh, we're going to shut this one off here. I'm going to turn on the top applicator so we can see how the angle of that one there is. Okay? So now here we are standing almost right in line with the arch and you can see we're barely being touched by the chemistry because the angle of this arch is, is back towards the car as it's going by. It will go out and hit the front windshield and all. And we're getting, again, a nice, wet, runny foam. When it hits the car like this here, it'll run and help to pull dirt right down the back of the vehicle and get it really lubricated so the wraparound of the brushes can take care of it. Again, we can adjust this uh, in a little more detail by playing with the air nozzle on it to get the foam pattern. We can also turn these nozzles because right now we're getting a lot of overlap at the center. If we want to get a wider pattern, we can turn those nozzles out a little bit more and make sure we get full coverage of our big vans big SUVs, and that's what's important. Okay, we'll turn this one off, and we'll turn on our floor sprayers and show you how they come up off the floor in the two different directions. So down here we have our, our floor applicators. This one here is our front bumper applicator. As you can see, it's aimed from the floor with the same flat fan nozzle, giving us a nice wide pattern, but spraying up at the front bumper of the grill, where really the road grime is, the bugs, and all the nasties are. And in this high-speed conveyor, if we're moving at about 120, 140, 50 cars an hour, we're able to get a really good concentration of chemical up there. We've got a little bit of dwell time before our cloth, and that'll really help clean the cars. And again, adjustable the same way with our foam control and our air control. We can make this a little bit foamier, a little bit wetter. We want wet, runny foam to do this, okay? We're gonna turn on now and show you the rear applicator and show you how it comes up right at the license plate area, going in the other direction. So now this one here, can you imagine as the car is coming across the top, we're spraying from here right up to the bumper, right up into the, or the back of a, of a vehicle. We can also roll that pipe a little bit more, but we can get the nice angle. We're gonna get chemical in there, which is the hardest place to clean right around that license plate area. 
And this is really going to help us. The faster we move a vehicle, the more angles and the more attacks we have to have with the chemistry. We need to cover the car completely with chemistry in order for all this chemical, all this cloth and all this high pressure to work. Okay? Now from here, we're going to go up to our wrap formers and we're going to show you how those work. We're going to light those up on the side of the arch here and we're going to put on some lubricating um, low pH foam soap onto the wraparounds to make sure that they don't cause any damage, grab any wipers or antennas. Let me show you how those work. Okay, now the next step here is our, our wrap foamers. These are our wrap foam sticks. We use them for multiple different reasons. We can use them for triple foam. We can use them for uh, wrap foamers. We can use them for just regular additional soap, uh, any way you want to use them. This gives us a nice, a um, little bit thicker, a little heavy foam, a lot of lubricity. This is where we start our low pH process. So we're going alkaline at the beginning. We want to switch over to low pH as we start to get down here into the friction material. And this is going to allow the car to get lubricated up so as the wraparound comes around, it gets a, a nice slippery surface to clean. We've got the alkaline underneath working on the dirt on the body of the car. We've got the low pH on top, keeping the brush lubricated and starting to change the chemistry there a little bit and gives us some good cleaning activity. <clears throat> we want this one here to be just like it is, long reaching out here to the car so we get good coverage, a lot of lubricity, a lot of foam, a little bit of cling because we want it to stay on the cloth. We want the cloth to catch it and keep it and keep working it into the vehicle as we go around the car. This is aimed always down towards the tunnel because we want to leave that alkaline on the car as long as we can. This has two sets of alkaline arches, so on a high-speed conveyor, they can actually run two, or they can run a double clean on vehicles that, are, that want to get an extra cleaning on it. They don't need to run both on every car, but they can run a double clean, or they can run it on the really busy, busy days to make sure they get full coverage. Each wraparound will have its own foamer. This is a reverse wraparound, so we have it mounted on the back side of the applicator arch because we want to get the soap on the car before the wrap touches it. On the other end of the wraparound, um, you'll mount your, your foamer on the exit leg of the emitter, spring again the car before the wrap. It's always important to do that. There's no place to put it on the equipment that'll get it there, and this is where that works the best. And again, same adjustments. A little more air becomes dry foam, a little, a little less air, a little more chemical becomes a wet foam. And here we're looking for a wet foam with a lot of lubricity, a good content that'll make it um, real safe to use and operate. This is our wrap foamer pump station. Same thing applies. We've got a pump stand. We've got two pumps on here. We're doing our first wrap and our second wrap all at the same pump. We've got the, the foaming manifold set up with a solenoid valve, air feeding our pump. Again, 40 to 45 PSI. If we crank that pressure up to 60, we'll get a little bit drier foam. If we bring it down to 20, we won't get as much penetration, but we'll get a wetter foam. We're going to go back to that 45 area. Same thing, our air pressure here, anywhere from 20 up to 30, 40 pounds will get us the right consistency we want for foam in the car. If we take it down, we want dry, we're gonna lower it down to the low end, it'll be a really wet foam. If we take the pressure way up, it'll start to hear the air come out the nozzles and we'll get a little bit of a drier foam. Um, again, we're looking for a wet foam. We're, we're pretty happy there in about a 35 to 50 ratio on the pumps. We'll press those in and lock them in place. And that gets us a really good foam and gets it working really well. These adjustments we showed were for the wrap tube foamer. As you saw on the CTAs, it also works on all of our foam applicators, whether it's the foam applicator arch, whether it's the floor applicator, whether it's the, the total body protectant or rain -X, same thing applies. A Little more air makes the foam a little bit drier, a little less air makes it wetter, a little more pump pressure gives us more volume, and then again, a little bit more air will give us the right mixture of dilution out there. It's all a balance between the chemical concentration the pump pressure and then the air pressure to give us the right kind of foam consistency that we're looking for. As you sit there and adjust yours up and down, five or 10 pounds each way, you'll see the changes. You want dramatic? Go 20 pounds each way. Go out and see what it did and then adjust it back to where you're getting a nice, wet, runny foam all over the vehicle on the wraparounds, so a little more thicker foam that's clinging to the cloth so it stays lubricated and gives you a nice, safe, uh, gentle wash process to get the cars clean, dry, and shiny. Thank you for watching this maintenance overview video. Please visit sunnysdirect.com and review the complete owner's manual before attempting any installation, maintenance, or repair of this component. There you'll learn necessary procedures, settings, and other considerations required for the safe operation of your car wash equipment.